Okay, now chapter nine, cellular respiration. So uh, this is the process that um, is, as I think I've said, the counterpart to photosynthesis. That is, it's the process that makes use of the products of photosynthesis to allow organisms to extract energy from the foods they consume. Um, and so indeed, that is how organisms get their energy from food. And some organisms make their own food, and some have to consume food. Um, but in all cases, whether you're an autotroph or heterotroph, you're going to have to do this process to get energy from food, regardless of whether you made that food yourself or you consumed it, got it from something else. Um, and so our formula 602 is essentially the reverse of photosynthesis. Now we're going to consume that food and in the presence of oxygen, my O there is kind of small, six oxygens. We're going to break down that food. We're going to release energy. And we're going to use that energy inside of cells to do work. And in the process, we create some water and some carbon dioxide. So the carbon that was in our food and these sugars ends up in the carbon dioxide that we breathe out into the air. And then, of course, it's there available for a plant to use to do the reverse reaction. Now, we'll see, although we show it as sort of the reverse reaction, the actual reactions themselves are not the reverse. We're not doing the reverse of the Calvin cycle, the light reactions. But the overall result, you could say, is the reverse. So the point is, again, to extract energy from the foods that we consume. And as you know, when you look at the side of a package of food or whatever, or the nutritional information that sort of the main things you look at are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Those are the molecules inside of foods that provide the bulk of the energy. The other things like the sodium levels and potassium, those are just nutrients that we need for certain processes. They really don't provide energy. The energy comes from these molecules. And um, in class, we're going to do a little activity that involve looking at these and comparing some of these foods because the amount of energy you get out of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, they're not equal to each other in terms of the amount of food they provide per gram. Um, so again, there's our, there's our formula. And the key step is we're trying to get energy out of these mo particular molecules, these foods, and make use of that energy. So what kinds of organisms do cellular respiration? Well, or s all sorts do. And when we say cellular respiration, that's sort of a more sp specific form of just saying respiration. Respiration, in this sense, is extracting energy from foods that are consumed. When we say cellular respiration, we basically mean respiration with oxygen, with oxygen around. We'll see that in the third section we'll talk about fermentation, which is essentially a type of respiration that occurs without oxygen. Um, but for now, we'll focus on the type that uses oxygen, cellular respiration. So, of course, heterotrophs do this, and so animals fungi, um, and certain types of um, organisms in the group protista, like, say, an amoeba, for example. Um, but autotrophs also do this. They are simply making use of the food that they have made. So, of course, plants do this. Algae do this.
But again, they're just making the food that they're going to break down in the cellular respiration. They don't have to consume it. All right, stages. Now, this is just sort of the overall look at cellular respiration. We're going to look at some of the details of these steps later. But there's three primary steps in cellular respiration, what's known as glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport, which, as we'll see, is very similar to what happened in photosynthesis with cellular respiration. Now, the organelle that's involved here which is shown here, is the mitochondria. That's the membrane-bound organelle that does cellular respiration. You'll notice the first step, glycolysis, happens outside the mitochondria, but then the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain happen inside the mitochondria. Starting with glycolysis, that's where we take our food, in this case just your basic glucose molecule, This sugar with six carbons. And we're going to do in glycolysis a step where we're going to break that glucose down into two three carbon molecules. And we're going to extract a little bit of energy from that process, that breakdown process. Those molecules will enter the mitochondrion um, and they will be fed into a process known as the Krebs cycle, named after Hans Krebs. And here we're going to break these molecules down a bit more, and we're going to release CO2. This is where we basically release the CO2 um, in this process. Remember, there's our formula, we're taking the sugar and breaking it down and releasing carbon dioxide. So it's here in the Krebs cycle where that part happens. We extract a bit more energy, but then we're going to take the energy from these carbon molecules and they're going to be, that energy is going to be transferred to other molecules through electron carriers similar to NADPH that we saw in photosynthesis, but not quite the same, but very similar. And those molecules are going to carry these energized electrons to the electron transport chain, which happens on this inner membrane that's found in the mitochondria. Mitochondria has an inner membrane and an outer membrane. And notice that inner membrane has a lot of folds in it, increasing the surface area. And it's here in the electron transport chain where we uh, extract the, or the bulk of the energy from this process. So we get You'll see a little energy here, a little here, and a lot here. It's at the end. Again, we're making use of oxygen. It's in this last step in the electron transport chain that we make use of that oxygen, and we generate the water. Um, so what do these terms mean? Aerobic and anaerobic. Well, what we've described here with cellular respiration is what we would call aerobic, and that is with oxygen. Cellular respiration is essentially an aerobic process. It requires oxygen. Anaerobic is without oxygen, and we'll see that fermentation is the type of respiration that occurs without oxygen. It does not make use of oxygen. Um, when we get to that section, we'll talk about that in more detail. And we'll talk about the kinds of organisms that do that. And we'll even take advantage of this process to make our ginger ale and perhaps some yogurt. OK. Um, all right. So that's that for the first section. Second section, we will focus on some of the details of these three steps of cellular respiration.